Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay. Um, it's half past eleven. Um, I've just been out visiting um, my brother and my sister. Uh, they live at different parts of North Manchester, so sorry for scratching my nose. So, um, I've just got back from visiting them. Uh, it's half past eleven. I'm going to go to bed in a minute, but I was very 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 concerned about something that I just felt I wanted just to think through in my head just before I go to bed uh, sorry for the itchy nose um, some of the things that I'm going to say are going to be quite controversial um, quite shocking what I'm going to say um, but I just want to think things through uh, about where one stands on these issues and so sorry so I want to just talk about, just for a minute, um, the issue of gay marriage and um, where that leads the Christian church. Uh, first of all, uh, on gay marriage, um, the biblical perspective is, is that Jesus died for everybody. He died for the whole world. He died um for gay people okay he died for lesbians he died for all of us uh there's no discrimination at the cross he died for everybody and therefore everybody can come to jesus if they repent and believe in him and, and find forgiveness including gay and lesbian people so there's a there's a, a an inclusiveness in the gospel there but then there's an exclusiveness and that when you become a Christian, you're defined when you trust in Christ, not by your sexuality, but by being a new creature in Christ. And what that means is, from a biblical perspective, that when you believe in Jesus, then if you were a lesbian before, or if you were gay before, and you believe in Jesus, you've got to change. You've got to, you've got to move away from that identity and seek your identity in Christ and your sexuality, sexual identity in him that means being obedient to Christ and Christ's teaching is that gay and lesbian lifestyle is a sin and that's what the Bible teaches so we, we've got to move away from that and move into walking biblically with Jesus and his teaching and the apostles now so that's basic Christianity really that's basic orthodox Christianity. However, um, then you've got the pastoral issue if someone's got a sexual problem, whether it be gay or lesbian or whatever the sexual problem is. You know, a sexual problem is a sexual problem. What it what that means is is if someone comes to me as a pastor say and says, you know, I'm struggling with being gay, well you don't come down hard on them you you show compassion and love and you walk with them in their pain uh, because they're struggling with that and you help them to work through that but you don't condemn them or judge them but if someone says look i i am gay and i or i'm a lesbian and i'm a christian and i'm going to have a gay partner or a lesbian partner and i'm going to get involved in that and do that and that's fine by me then that kind of thinking is just completely not on according to the Bible it's just completely not right it's completely wrong according to the Word of God and here's the question is what authority are we basing what we're saying and we say as Christians that we base our authority on the Bible and the Bible teaches us that we're to trust in Christ repent of our sin and walk his way and that there are certain biblical principles concerning marriage that marriage is between a man and a woman and sex is inside marriage etc and that is the biblical perspective and that's our authority that's where we stand um, so that that's where the Christian faith stands in terms of gay marriage is, is those are the biblical parameters now it's just been announced today that that um, <coughs> that the Prime Minister 
has announced that Parliament are going to push through, or try and push through, uh, gay marriage, uh, the right of gay marriage. Now, where, 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 what does this all mean? Um, well, basically, it means that Britain and the West are basically morally bankrupt. Basically. Basically. To make such a move in the West, I know a couple of other countries have done have done this already. But basically we have we are we we are in the West morally bankrupt. We are morally utterly bankrupt. And we are heading for moral and social catastrophe and collapse. I'm not trying to scare people. That's what I genuinely think. Um, we are overturning centuries, thousands of years <laughs> of something that brings stability to nations. And we are just overturning that completely overturning something that that has been God ordained that is at the very basic fabric of society and we as modern human beings are saying no we know better and we're overturning that for the for a small minority who have not been known for this kind of advocation over the centuries <laughs> they've not been known for it it's only the last few years started to get get into this uh, kind of thinking so that's where we're at really we're we're in a social revolution of immense proportions really so so basically um, what we have to do is realize that the state is going to legislate gay marriage what that will do is that will put pressure upon churches to have to add, um, to conduct gay marriages now the prime minister has given uh, his promise and the government will give their promise as well that the state will not force churches to conduct gay marriages if they don't want to but the problem is once they enshrine it in law that gay marriage is a right then and also that churches that want to do it shall be allowed to do it then the European law will be used by gay rights activists to make sure that those churches that do not conduct gay marriages will be taken to task so basically if gay marriage is brought in in the UK um, basically means that the churches that don't advocate gay marriage will be criminalized and we're heading for churches really meeting in houses leaving their their buildings or perhaps um, not having a registrar so they don't ha conduct any marriages at all so that if anybody does ask them to marry them if they're gay and they say well we can't because we don't conduct marriages anyway um, but that would be leaving marriage to the secularist and in the hands of the secularist and in the hands of um, a corrupt small minority church but I think basically it means the more more marginalization of orthodox christianity from um public life which has already been marginalized and also um possibly uh, a new generation of people leaving the buildings leaving their churches and forming house churches so I should imagine in the next few years 
if this gay marriage goes ahead that there will be a proliferation of house churches and basically it looks pretty pretty bad from a religious freedom perspective it looks pretty pretty bleak um, I think the state has underestimated the Christian feeling and Christian uh, feeling about this and I think the state has picked a fight that it can't win because I think you're going to see now the church really the the the, church, the true Christian church is now going to start to fight and when the church fights you know the church is around when the church starts to fight the church hasn't been fighting for the last hundred years the church has been asleep but I think the church is going to wake up and the church is going to start fighting for its life it won't be it will not be um, physical fighting it won't be with bombs and bullets because that's not what the church is about and true Christians don't, don't advocate that but when I mean fight I mean it's going to be Martin Luther King style fight it's going to be marches it's, it's going to be sitting outside parliament in the rain uh, night after night singing songs until we get our freedom back but I feel that sometimes you pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed till the uh, a, 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 a point where you cannot be pushed anymore and the secularists have pushed us they've pushed us they've pushed us and they pushed us and now they've backed us into a wall where they're going to do this gay marriage and we have to put our flag in the stand, sand and we have to say no more no more Mr Cameron no more Prime Minister Cameron no more Parliament no more we will make our stand so I would say to Christians you've got to make your stand now you've got to make your stand you've got to make your stand you've got to nail your flag up you've got to stand for Jesus today the way you stand for Jesus is you say no more we are not being pushed around anymore that's what we've got to do we've got to say we're not having it anymore we're not being pushed around because not only if gay marriage gets in it's affecting the schools because the schools are already teaching about gay and lesbian relationships so if it's enshrined in law about gay marriage then the kids are going to get taught it and we're heading for a nightmare So I challenge you, Prime Minister, if you, if you ever get to listen to this, to come and arrest me. To come and arrest me. I challenge you, Prime Minister, to come and have me arrested. Because as far as I'm concerned, you've pushed the church too far. Enough's enough. No more. We're not having it anymore. Homosexuality is a sin. The gay a lesbian world in Britain needs to repent and flee and turn away from their sin and find forgiveness and mercy in Jesus Christ those who are struggling with gay and lesbian issues who have believed in Jesus Christ we will walk with them in their pain and we will weep with them in their pain and we will be there in pastoral care but Prime Minister we as a nation need to repent all of us I need to repent you need to repent every well, every church needs to repent every pastor every person in the congregation churches every Anglican Catholic Methodist Baptist needs to repent every teacher every student every pupil every university lecturer every judge every journalist every one of us 
needs to repent. Every father, every mother, every grandfather, every grandmother, every one of us needs to repent and turn back to God. We need to turn back to God. We need to turn back to Jesus Christ and come back to Him. So Prime Minister, I challenge you to come and have me arrested. Because I'm telling you, Prime Minister, you need to repent of pushing this gay marriage down people's throats. The gay rights lobby needs to repent. The lesbian lobby needs to repent. And everybody who supports these gay rights needs to repent. They need to repent because the Bible teaches that it's a sin and it's wrong. That we are saying something is light when it is darkness. Let us not call what is darkness light. Let us call the light light and the dark dark. And let us not mix darkness with light. So Prime Minister, have me arrested. Have me arrested. Because I'm telling you, you have sinned against the living God for what you have done and what you are doing pushing this gay rights down the throats of the British people without free democratic vote you are not giving the British people the right to vote on this serious matter which is against the word of God and if you as gay people and lesbian people are offended by what I've just said then I am not sorry I am not sorry and long may I be arrested and long may I be in prison as a political martyr for the Son Jesus Christ for standing up for the Word of God in a godless immoral age that's how I that's what I believe that's what I think my name's Jason Burns I live in Manchester, so if you want to get the police to come and arrest me, then get the police to arrest me. But I'm sick and tired of the Prime Minister, I'm sick of the Parliament, and I'm sick of the gay rights movement pushing us around and not giving us our freedom of, of religion. And it's going to be taken away from us when they get their gay marriage. And that's what I feel. That's what I feel, folks. I feel really strongly about it. I feel really strong about it. So YouTube, you can, you can strike this video down. But just remember, when you strike it down, there are millions, literally millions of people in this country, in America, and around the world who feel the same way as I do. So if you take this down, it's not about you saying, oh, you're homophobic, and you're, you're taking a voice of people who were passionate, who, who were being hurt. We are being hurt. We are being hurt. We are being desecrated. Our beliefs that we believe are being desecrated and trampled on. And people are not listening to the majority of people who believe that this is wrong. At least, at least give the British people the right to vote on this issue. At least give them the right to do that and YouTube keep this video up if the government will not allow people to vote on this issue but MPs making this decision without without it being a, an issue where people can vote then YouTube you should keep this video up and allow people the right to discuss this issue that's what I feel I feel very strongly about it if gay people want to get married and get and lesbian people want to get married that's up to them what they do is up to them if the state wants to advocate it that's up to the state but when the state when the state interferes with the church and tries to make the church accept something that the church doesn't believe in all conscience th that it believes in when the state does that then that is the time when we have to say as Christians enough is enough I can stand and I can do no other I believe the Bible is the Word of God I trust the Bible I trust Jesus Christ 
He is sovereign. He is Lord of the Church. And you, Prime Minister, and you, Parliament, are trying to take over the Lordship of Christ. And you're not the Lord of the Church. Jesus is Lord of His Church. And you gay and, li gay and lesbian people are not Lord of your sexuality. Jesus is Lord of your sexuality. And He defines what sexuality is. Jesus is Lord of our nation. And He is Lord of YouTube. And He is Lord of all. And long may Jesus rule. And may we all bow the knee to His Lordship. God bless you.